Last October, the Ottawa Senators had a pair of potentially franchise-defining decisions to make with the number three and number five overall picks. With the first one, they made the obvious choice. Tim Stutzla, a high-paced, ultra-flashy attacker sure to sell tickets and bring top-line upside. With the second one, they went for a bit of a surprise. Jake Sanderson wasn't the consensus number one defender in the draft class, and while the industry was higher on Sanderson than much of the public sphere, his counting stats made him appear to be a low-risk, moderate-reward pick. It wasn't true at the time, and now it couldn't be further from the truth. What does Carl Gehring's power play have up its sleeve here? How about a goal? Jake Sanderson! They have it in the high slot. Sanderson right side. Bernard Docker turns it back to Sanderson. Sanderson weaving his way in, and he scores. What a move and what a finish. Jake Sanderson deked around a sliding defender. Sanderson's point per game actually went up in the NCA from 0.62 to 0.68. That's an increase in scoring while the competition ramps up significantly. That's not supposed to happen. If you're not convinced, the underlying metrics suggest that he probably earned even more points. Last season, Sanderson was above average, but not significantly so, in individual expected goals per 60 in a sample of 45 teams across the CHL and USHL. This season, he was well above average, despite a downtick in shots and again against better competition. As a playmaker, that's even more pronounced, where Sanderson went from a standout USHL playmaker to the leader amongst defensemen in my Big Ten and NCHC-focused dataset. To understand how Sanderson improved his offense against better competition, we have to start in the defensive zone. In his draft year, Sanderson was among the best defensemen I tracked in transition. That's true again this season. He led UND's blue line in controlled exit percentage, over 30% better than the team average when pressured by the opposition. That percentage is how many passes and carries the player makes versus dumping the puck. Simply put, he just doesn't dump it out ever. His exit success, basically the inverse of a turnover rate for defensive zone touches, dipped a bit. But that's mostly due to sample size noise, and he was still among the best, and at the same time, the volume increased. The transition mastery starts on retrievals, skating back for a dump-in. He skates hard to get in front of his check, waits for them to chase, and then escapes out the back door. And he loves these subtle passes to the inside through pressure. He does them off the forehand and backhand, and even adds in a bit of deception to prevent the opposition from reading his intentions. Here, he angles his toes in the direction the puck is headed. From that position, he can accelerate and continue forward, cut back or step inside if the pressure is closer. Instead, he deceives, turning his toes in the opposite direction before quickly turning towards the original path, confusing the forechecker. And he makes transitioning the puck look so easy. He's fast and confident, but doesn't force plays. He's always patient under pressure, but never lacks pace, always getting into the rush when possible. This pass after turning his body towards the net to fake a shot is a favorite of his and super projectable. Likewise, he loves this fake dump in, turning his body towards the outside as if he's running out of space, only to pass back to the middle for a controlled entry. These are translatable plays, ones that many NHLers can't do, and Sanderson does them every single game. With that level of transition skill, it was only a matter of time before it translated to the offensive zone. This sequence starts identically to many of his transition sequences. He throws out a fake on the pass reception to freeze the feet of the nearest defender. Then he accelerates into space where his newfound confidence in his handling takes over. He grabs the puck, sees that number 26 is skating away from the slot, then immediately cuts inside and gets two more chances. He's extremely adaptable, identifying space immediately, then showing the handling and skating skill to escape pressure and bring the puck to the middle. He doesn't force plays that aren't there, showing an understanding of how to develop offense. Again, the look-off pass appears in his offensive zone play, a staple of his passing arsenal. When it all comes together, Sanderson creates dynamic shifts like this one, First, he moves on the pass reception, allowing him to manipulate the defender's feet. 
he steps towards the middle, turning the defender's feet, which creates a lane down the outside. This might not be a perfect decision, but he doesn't just retreat to the point. He stays activated at the top of the circle, ready for a one-timer. Eventually, he gets the puck, but instead of shooting immediately, he passes it into the slot for a high danger chance. Brilliant. North Dakota's structure promotes activation and experimentation, which Sanderson has taken full advantage of. Not every play works out perfectly, but that he can prod for openings and develop his skills only bodes well for his future. Then there's Sanderson's defense. Subjectively, he's arguably the best prospect on the planet at strictly defending. Statistically, there might be a bit of truth to that, as he led my NCAA dataset in defensive zone breakups by a massive margin. He's a formidable rush defender, angling out attackers before finishing them off along the boards. He's always aware and aggressive, but never over pursues. That defensive value provides a high degree of certainty to his projection. He's going to have a long NHL career. Combined with his transition skill, those two alone could make him a number two or number three defenseman. How much of the offense he brings with him to the NHL will probably decide whether or not he becomes a number one. Consider this, this level of offensive awareness isn't new to his game. No, he's certainly not a Cal McCarr level attacker and he's probably not Quinn Hughes level either, but he showed plenty of creativity, deception, and manipulation potential with the development program. While it wasn't quite as frequent, it was easy to see how it could translate to the NCAA in the right environment. If Ottawa starts promoting more off-puck activation, creativity, and on-puck experimentation from their defensemen, and Sanderson continues to improve, he could become a number one defenseman who posts positive results at both ends of the rink. For the full breakdown, head to epringside.com and check out our feature piece on Jake Sanderson, highlighting his skill set, progression, and more. Trust me, you do not want to miss it.